Back for another episode of the Successful Driver Podcast presented by Aero Truck Sales. Thank you guys so much for coming and hanging out with us, watching, listening, whatever you're doing. We really appreciate you participating, engaging with what we're doing here uh, on the Successful Driver Podcast. And I'm really excited today. We're talking to a branch manager here at Aero Truck Sales, Charlie Collier out in Cincinnati. Charlie, what's good with you, my friend? Everything's good, man. Thanks for having me, Kent. Yeah, I'm so excited it. to talk to you, my friend. I, you know, it's you've you've been uh, you've been here for a while. You've got you've had a few different roles here at Arrow. I want to kind of just hear your entire industry background here, though. Let's let's talk a little bit about how you got started in the trucking industry, when you got started in the trucking industry, sure. and, and all the way up to this point here in your career. Uh, just just give us the background of of, of let's 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 hear the Charlie Collie st- call your story before we get going. Sure, no problem. Uh, kind of goes way back into about the mid seventies. My my dad and my family had a trucking uh, a trucking business, and um, it kind of all started back then. Uh, young guy, still in school, but weekends were all tied up with uh, after baseball games, headed to the shop. At that time, it was all about pulling weeds and fixing flat tires. But uh, <laughs> uh, after hanging around for a while, you know, listening to my dad, my brothers, and getting that experience. Um, we became a pretty uh, pretty well-known shop in the, in the area, uh, you know, the greater Cincinnati area, and uh, was able to take on a lot of owner-operator business at that time. Uh, we had a small little place and a little town called Sharonville here in Cincinnati. Um, definitely wasn't big enough as we were growing. So um, yeah, at the time, you know, my mom got a little sick. So my dad said, hey, if you guys want this property, you want to make any big difference or you want to make a difference. I'll give you the property. uh, You go from there. So my brothers and I hawked everything we had, built a building and put a sign out front and started knocking on doors. And, uh, you know, that's where it kind of all started. Um, From there, we got, uh, you know, times changed a little bit. I'm sure we could talk about that a little bit more as we get into this conversation. But I'm sure we will. (laughs) uh, Times changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Times changed. And so, uh, you know, more engine work, more general repair started to needed to be done. So we didn't want a customer to come by to have a brake job done and then have to leave and go and, uh, you know, get an engine repaired somewhere else. So uh, we got the right people involved, opened up a second location and uh, was able to take care of general repair as well as um, as well as engine repair. So that that was our second location. And we kind of continued to grow our business. And from there on, um, I, I'd always done some work for Aero. We were always a outside vendor to take care of some uh, some recon work for Aero. We weren't their number one people, but for many years we did a lot for them. Um, but at one point, uh, we were kind of approached with the idea of you know doing all the recon for Aero. So um, it sounded really good. We put our heads together with uh, some of the people there at Aero. And the, the, the at the time branch manager, and before you know it, we had a third location behind behind Arrow uh, at their location here in Cincinnati as well. And at that time, took care of probably ninety percent wow. of all of Arrow's reconditioning stuff. So, uh, kind of grew a brother, a dad, brother, and mom type business into twenty six employees and three locations. And um, it's just kind of where it's been. Uh, in 2012, we had an opportunity to sell our business to um, uh, uh, our biggest our biggest vendor at the time. And, uh, you know, at that point, it was just me and my brother. My dad had passed a little bit earlier and uh, it was a great opportunity. So we took a hold of that opportunity and we had kind of a agreement to stick around with them for a few years. Uh, I didn't you know, we just didn't agree on some of the same things. So. I thought I'd head out, you know, and try something different. Yeah. And I had a good friend working at uh, Aero Truck Sales, a big account of mine. I stopped in to see him one day and he said, how about if you come to work for me? And, you know, at first it was just a thought. Um, but uh, the more we talked, uh, the more it sounded like Aero and my truck business really kind of matched. And what I mean by that is they really care. And that's one thing that made us very successful in my truck repair business. And I think that's, you know, as I do this every day for Arrow over the past five years, I'm recognizing more and more that the decision I made five years ago was an awesome decision based on kind of how we did things. Then Arrow is really cares about what they do. And, and that makes a difference. That really makes a huge difference for your success. And um, after five years, uh, I started out here, you know, we'll go back a little bit, but I started out as an assistant branch manager slash sales manager for, for, 
uh, the Cincinnati branch. And when the branch manager then moved on, I had an opportunity to uh, apply for a branch manager position, and uh, the people at corporate uh, saw the you know saw that uh, maybe I'd be a good you know a good option for them, and here I am. So um, every day I, I love it. I have an intention to get up every day to do what I did in my old business, doing it here. And man, I get to work with some of my same old customers. I get to you know hear about how their business is doing, how it's growing. Um, some good, some not so good, but you know, that's this business. And um, this has been a great fit for me. And that's kind of like how everything got started into where I'm at today. Yeah. Two things kind of stick out with me when I'm, when I'm hearing your story, it's, you know, a lot, there's so many people here at Arrow and their story in the trucking industry doesn't stop and start with Arrow or start and stop. You know, it's, there's, there's a lot of history and background before and after, but also more interesting about your story. It seems like Arrow has been pretty intertwined with your trucking you know, journey here, your, your truck yeah. industry journey here. And I think that's pretty fascinating in and of itself. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, if we go backwards a little bit and talk about how I was connected or how my company was connected with Arrow prior to me working as an employee for Arrow, it was great. I mean, the relationship was phenomenal. And there was only, there were a couple other branch managers in this position when we started working, my company started working for Arrow which um, really gave me an opportunity to get to know who Arrow was. And I got to know the people in the now what we call the warranty call center. They, 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 that's new to Arrow over the past couple of years. But prior, I got a chance to work with those guys because I was taking care of some of the repairs and would have to have communication with them during those times. But um, some people who no longer work for Arrow, Arrow who have um, retired or uh, moved on. I got an opportunity to get to know them too. But yeah, man, it's been really cool. Um, and the people that we work with here um, definitely are some of the greatest people out there. And you, if you're in this industry, you kind of you kind of got to understand what that means. You know, there's great sure. people everywhere, but this this is a tough industry. This is a real tough industry, and I know you would agree to that. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, you, you, I know you got some questions for me coming up, and uh, you know, around. I've heard some of the podcasts. I've loved and uh, you know, and enjoyed listening to them. But man, there's just so many things in this industry that can be very tough, but so rewarding. And it takes a special person to be able to do it. Even, even for us, the guys that are selling the trucks, or the the, the corporate people that are up there doing their best to try to get us the trucks. And mm -hmm. you know, there's just so much. And you know, there's so much to it to be able to provide us with that that inventory and the tough job that you got to do to do it. And guess what? We're selling it to the guys that's got to go do a tough job. For sure. So it takes a special person, but uh, I'll tell you what, the reward is really worth it. Definitely. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and you know, Charlie, you've, you've worked with a lot of successful drivers. Uh, you've seen a lot of them throughout your, your long career. I'm not trying to age you, but... All right. Um, what do you think makes a successful driver? You know, I thought about that because I've listened again to your podcast and I knew this question was coming and there's a lot of things, Kent. But one thing that really comes to mind is, is that, you know, we, we, first of all, we sell to a lot of first time owner operators, right? These guys have been in business where they've driven for a company and they're not worried about paying for the fuel, the insurance, the right. truck payment, whatever. But man, I think one of, the, one, of, one of the very most important things is really understanding what you're getting into. Um, look, we're going to go out. It's not just as easy as being able to get qualified to buy a truck or pay cash for one. You got to maintain that truck and you got to understand the business that you're getting into, who you're going to go to work for. Are they a reputable company? Um, if they are a reputable company, are they providing certain kind of insurances or do you have to provide that? Um, and understand this because it takes a lot from a guy to leave a job, go into this new business and take everything that he's got to put down on this piece of equipment and then to find out, oh my God, I got a repair that I can't afford to take care of. So I think really a big part of it is understanding the business, knowing what you're getting into um, and, and certainly getting, getting in touch with your accountant. I mean, there's let him know what you're doing. Let him understand, let him kind of give you some pointers on what it's going to take to get into this business and decide then, is this what I want to do? If, if, and if it is, I mean, you know, this is, this is a, a great business to get into, but really understanding it is going to be the key, I think for sure. Right. And like, I mean, we want to sell, you know, a, a million trucks if we can, but yeah. we want, under, we want people to understand the gravity <clears throat> of what they're about to take, you know, and, I, mm -hmm. I've, I've said this before. It's, it's more like a mortgage than it is, than it is a, a, a car purchase. 
you know, this is, this is livelihood. Sometimes this is where guys are sleeping, you know, more than, more than often. And um, I think that's really sound advice is just understanding the gravity of what you're getting into. Not that it's impossible, but not that it's easy either. I mean, it's, I mean, but I mean, these guys too, I mean, they know, they know this, they know this industry and easy, <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So Charlie, your role in the truck driver story, how do you feel you're helping truck drivers find success out there in Cincinnati? Well, today, you know, we go backwards and it was doing everything you can, not saying no, <clears throat> saying no whenever the fire's out. If there's an option or an opportunity to help a customer, I think that, you know, in, in my prior life truck repair business, that that was huge for us. We did whatever we could. Yep, it meant long hours. It meant late nights. It meant maybe missing something, a family thing, whatever it was. But literally, that's how we supported our family, right? Mm -hmm. Same thing right here when you get into the truck repair business, uh, or I'm sorry, into the trucking business. Sure. If you're going to do that, um, you got to understand that that's what it's going to take. It's a, it takes a really, really strong person. And then it takes the strong person at home that's supporting that husband or wife that's out there driving that truck. Mm -hmm. um, but man, the things that, I, that, that, that you could do to help somebody in this business, first of all, you got to listen to them. We've got to understand what their needs are mm -hmm. and do the very best we can to provide them uh, with what they think they need to do their job with. Now, keep in mind, we're in the used truck business, so we can't always check the boxes. But if we could check nine out of 10 or eight out of 10 boxes and we can get them that truck, we could provide the financing for them. We can provide aftermarket warranty to protect their investment going down the road. Um, in the event they get into some sort of a situation where their truck is, uh, you know, fails on them. Um, and then after the sale, it was one thing I definitely learned. And, and another thing that really matched up with me very well when I came to work for Arrow is Arrow cares about their customer. So if, they, if they're having a problem, we may not monetarily be able to help them all the time, but we certainly have um, the network of people with 18 branches across the country to be able to reach out, try to get them to a shop, a reputable shop, try to get them in there, get them taken care of, maybe with some arrow pricing or just with a relationship that we have. So after the sale, we're there to help that customer as well too. It's really refreshing to hear. And I'm not just saying this because I work for Arrow. So I'm not just trying to turn this into an Arrow, you know, infomercial. No. What I really appreciate about all the people that we've talked to is the honesty and realistic expectations that they set. They're not, you know, like you're saying, you know, this is a used truck and we're trying to check as many boxes as we can. Yeah. That doesn't mean we're going to check every box. That's and, right. you know, I think that kind of ties in back to and why I think, you know, what you say about, you know, setting expectations and, and, and being realistic and honest about, you know, the gravity of the situation of becoming an owner operator. I think this all ties <clears> to that. <throat> it shows the genuine nature that you kind of possess with all this. It's, you know, you're not, you're not running from the fact that this is a used vehicle. No, and for sure. For sure. We had a customer in the other day and I knew it was his first time uh, buying a truck. Um, as I was going out to say, thank you for your business. Hey, is everything well taken care of for you? Do we, you know, did I, do you have any questions for me? any of that type of stuff? I, I overheard him talking to my sales guy and said, well, how much does a tire cost? A thousand, fifteen hundred dollars. And I knew right then that this was his first, this was his first purchase. So I didn't really interrupt uh, the sales guy in their conversation, but afterwards I did get my opportunity to say, thank you. And I said, Hey, would this happen to be your first truck purchase? And he said, yeah, by the way, his wife and his child was here too. Mm. So we see that a lot, right? So what's going through my mind is let's make sure that we can give him all the advice, maybe not to, to the extent to make him change his mind about what he's doing, but to try to help him as he's getting into the business. But sure. You know, one thing that I could tell you is if, if you are, connect with somebody you could trust, a local repair shop, a local dealership. Those are going to be part of that's Those are your business partners in this business that's going to help you. Um, and then we talked a little bit more, but I'm, I mean, trying to give them the best advice and really be totally upfront with them. Man, that's the key. That, that's the key because there's no reason to hide anything. Be transparent with your customers. hundred percent. If you know it, share it with them for sure. So if I said, if I made this statement, I just want to hear your thoughts on this. Yeah. Young truck drivers, first time owner operators should seek out the seasoned veterans and try to just pick their brains as much as possible. 
Okay, I can agree to that. And then I can say that there's going to be a little conflict between the old veterans, right? Because the old veterans, man, they're not used to some of the new things that are going on. And the new guys are coming from all the new stuff that's going on, if that makes some sense. No, it does. But man, I'm going to tell you. Yeah. I'm going to tell you this. The old veterans set the stage for me. Right. So we can in turn do the same thing for the new guys that are coming on. And what I mean by that is, a lot of technologies changed. A lot of trucks have changed. But right now, these guys are looking at stuff that they've probably gotten out of or just starting with. So I'll tell you, I mean, I, I agree with what you're saying. Listen to what the guys say. I'm not sure I've listened to the guy just sitting in a truck stop that says I make five dollars a mile. But I, if if he did, I would definitely go research that before you made your decision to move forward. You know what I mean? Sure. How does the conversation with an old, older seasoned veteran driver that's been in the industry, has been driving his own trucks for 30 years, how does the conversation for you differ talking to him when he comes into your lot versus a new guy? And I have a hard time agreeing with a lot of what they're saying or disagreeing with a lot of what they're saying. I mean, we're talking about guys that say, man, I got to have these new e-logs man, I got to have, you know, they got DPF, you know, different emission systems on the truck and man, I got, you know, and, and so I have never left from, from a certain point of the repair standpoint up to uh-huh. now selling and seeing it. Right. And um, sometimes I find myself agreeing with them um, at certain points, but then I have to correct myself and say, well, that's the way it's going. It's the way it's going. And, and these guys are typically the guys, again, that set the stage for me and I respect them like God, like no other. They're the best people in the world. Um, They're working hard to take care of their families and their futures as well. So it's hard to really get into like arguments. We just sometimes got to listen and let them know how things are now, whether we like it or not. This is the way the industry's going. Sometimes we just have to deal with it, you know? No, I get it. I get it. Normally, normally, Charlie, I normally ask people changes that they've noticed uh, you know, in the last year in the trucking industry or over the course of their career, but I'm actually more interested in about something else now. Uh-oh. Uh, you've had a lot of history with Arrow. Mm-hmm. Uh, when was your first interaction with Arrow? Oh man, you really want to hear the story. Okay. I'll I just want to know. I just want to know the year we can, we can get into the details if you want, but I just want to know like how far back, how far back does your relationship with Arrow go? This is pre Volvo. All right. Okay. So- um, exact year pre Volvo. I'll put it. So I think somewhere around the, the, the around 2000 arrow was acquired by Volvo yes. around 2000, 2001. Mm-hmm. So I got to say somewhere in the mid nineties, um, we were, we were doing an engine overhaul for arrow and, um, they wanted us to, you know, my, my shop, uh, to do, to use a particular part. And, um, I'd used them before and didn't have a lot of success with it. And I expressed my uh, I expressed my uh, thoughts about using it. They decided to use it anyway, and uh, we did. And then the job failed. Um, we both learned a couple of things. I kind of learned how to how to uh, talk to Arrow up front if we had to do that again. But they also learned how to listen to uh, to the repair shop that they put their trust in as well too. So we didn't have a problem that cost a lot more money down the road. So first interaction was doing an engine overhaul for them. And my Lord, they put their trust in me to do an engine overhaul instead of a maxi break or something, you know, but um, I'm glad they did. But we, I think that made our relationship a lot stronger back then. Um, and, and then it was just a little bit here and there for them. And then we kind of didn't do anything for about a year. And then I went over and knocked on it knocked on the door again. And before you know it, heck, I was doing four or five jobs a week. And then it was, I had four or five aero trucks on my lot every day. Mm-hmm. And uh, that kind of slowed down at another point. And then, uh, you know, it just kept picking back up with new different, we, we had to learn new branch managers and new vendors as branch managers came in. But um, I can't say a lot of bad things at all. There's, there's just not, it's just, we learned a lot from each other throughout the years for sure. So- Okay, so this is my follow up to this, and this is really what I want to know. You've seen the pre Volvo days at Arrow. You've seen the post Volvo days at Arrow. You've seen a lot of iterations, a lot of versions. The internet wasn't as big of a thing when you started talking to Arrow, or started working with Arrow. So, I want to know the changes, and not just the, the Volvo ownership, because I, you know, I, I know that was a big thing in the history of Arrow truck sales. But what's the biggest thing you've noticed from when you started? 
working with Arrow in the mid nineties, almost 30 years ago to now? Man, uh, they care. They care so much more today um, about their customer. They really do. They understand without their customer, there's no, there's no need to be here. And that really sinks with me very, very well, because that's, it's exactly how I grew up in my, you know, in my day, right. In my truck repair day, but it's, it gets stronger every day. The people at the corporate office, my boss, um, the, our trainers that help us, they constantly care about, about our customers because our, again, without them, we, we just don't exist. So I think that one of the biggest things, one of the very biggest things that, and it seems to be getting stronger and stronger. And, and, and even the things that you mentioned earlier, what are we doing as far as with the internet and Facebooks? And um, I'm not very privy, or I mean, I don't know a whole lot about that stuff, but I know how to use it once you put it in place and it's all customer-based and it's for the customer. And uh, I, I really believe that one of the biggest things that, that Arrow, I've seen a big change about is each year they're making changes to, to do better to serve our customers. It's gotta mean one thing. It's gotta mean they care, period. And uh, that, that definitely resonates well with me. No, that's, that's a really good answer. I was really kind of just fascinated to see, you know, you've got almost 30 years with us here of experience working with us or, or working for us. Yeah. So, uh, I'm not, again, I'm not trying to age you too much here, Charlie, but it's all right. That's you're okay. A, you're a seasoned vet here. And, uh, it was really great to get a perspective from you. I hope we can do this again sometime soon. So yeah. Charlie, thank you so much for jumping on, uh, and spending a little time with us here on the show. I appreciate you having me. Love to come back sometime. All right, that is going to do it for the Successful Driver Podcast. Thank you to Charlie Collier out in the Cincinnati branch. If you're in that area, go give him a go give him a holler. I'm sure he'll want to talk with you more about what he's got going out there and what we can do for you in the trucking industry. Thank you all so much. We'll catch you later. <laughs>